In this video, I will cover some of the basics concerning walking gait. Let's begin by going over some terminology. First, we can talk about a step and a stride. A step occurs from initial contact of one foot to initial contact of the other foot. As illustrated in the drawing here, we have initial contact of the right foot to initial contact of the left foot, indicating a step. And the difference between those two initial contacts are the step length. A stride is actually the initial contact of one foot to the initial contact of that same foot. In my figure here, we have initial contact of the right foot to initial contact of the right foot again, indicating a stride. And again, the physical distance between those two initial contacts are the stride length. Next, we can talk about when there are two feet in contact with the ground. When there are two feet in contact with the ground, that is known as double limb support. In contrast, when there is only one foot in contact with the ground, that will be known as single limb support. If a foot is not in contact with the ground, that is known as the swing limb. In the figure here, the swing limb is the right leg while the leg that is in contact with the ground is the stance limb. In this particular case, the left leg ends up being the stance limb. So with double limb support, both limbs are in a stance phase. While in single limb support, one limb is in a stance phase, while the other limb is in a swing phase. And I hope you can appreciate that each limb alternates between stance and swing. And they are also asynchronous with one another. There will be times, such as double limb support, when both limbs are going to end up being in stance, but we're not going to have both limbs being in swing at the same time. Next, we have to talk about foot strike. There are, in general, two different types of foot strike. If we have a heel strike or a rear foot strike, as the name implies, the calcaneus is going to come in contact with the ground first, and then we will plant our flex until the foot is flat on the ground. We can contrast that with a forefoot strike where the metatarsal heads will make initial contact with the ground, and then we will dorsiflex in order to get the foot flat on the ground. Next, let's review gait speed. In other words, how fast you are walking. How fast you are walking is going to be determined by both step length and step rate. As I mentioned previously, step length is the distance from initial contact to the next initial contact. While step rate is how many steps you would take in a duration of time, such as how many steps you take in a minute. Now, it is perfectly acceptable if you wanted to substitute in the boxes above stride instead of step. For instance, you can say that your gait speed, or how fast you're walking, is determined by your stride length and your stride rate. Just keep in mind that if you put stride in one box, you have to put stride in the other we cannot start to mix steps and strides. We can't have step in one place and stride in the other. You should also know that step rate is also known as step frequency or simply as cadence. Now, let's go over some of the functional tasks associated with gait. The first is going to be weight acceptance. We have to be able to put our weight onto that particular limb. Next, we have to put all of our weight onto that limb so that we can take the other limb and swing it forward in order to move. So again, we have three functional tasks during gait. Weight acceptance, single limb support, and swing limb advancement. Now we can turn our attention to the gait cycle. Gait is a cyclic task, and that means you can start your analysis anywhere within the gait cycle. For our purposes, 
we are going to take those three functional tasks of weight acceptance, single limb support, and swing limb advancement, and we are going to break them up into subphases. And we are going to start with initial contact. Initial contact begins when the foot just makes contact with the ground, and it's going to end when the foot is flat on the ground. The next phase we have within weight acceptance is loading response. Loading response will start when the foot is flat on the ground, and it's going to end when the opposite foot lifts off of the ground. The opposite foot lifting off of the ground is going to signal that we are going to enter into single limb support. With single limb support, we will first have mid stance. Mid stance starts when the opposite foot lifts off of the ground, and it's going to end when the center of mass is aligned over the support foot. Terminal stance will start when the center of mass is aligned over the support foot, and it will end with initial contact of the opposite foot. When the opposite foot makes contact with the ground, that signals that we have ended single limb support and we're ready to move on to swing limb advancement. Our first phase of swing limb advancement is pre-swing. Pre-swing will start with initial contact of the opposite foot and it will end when that reference foot initially leaves the ground. Next, we have initial swing. Initial swing will start when the foot initially leaves the ground, and it will end when that swing foot is opposite of the stance foot. Our third phase of swing limb advancement is mid-swing. Mid-swing will start when the swing foot is opposite of the stance foot, and it will end when the shank, or the tibia and the fibula, are vertical. And then our final phase will be terminal swing. Terminal swing starts when the shank is vertical, and it will end when that foot touches the floor. The gait cycle is commonly divided into both stance and swing. If we were to break up the gait cycle into stance and swing, other than the three elements that I have listed here, stance phase would consist of initial contact, loading response, mid stance, terminal stance, and pre-swing, while the swing phase would include the initial swing, the mid-swing, and the terminal swing. So there you have it. There are some of the basics of walking gait. We began by introducing some terminology. First, we talked about a step, which went from initial contact of one foot to initial contact of the next foot. And we distinguished that from stride, which was initial contact of one foot to initial contact of that same foot. We talked about how when both feet are in contact with the ground, we are in double limb support, whereas if one foot is in contact with the ground, we have single limb support. If a foot is in contact with the ground, that leg becomes the stance limb, and if that foot is not in contact with the ground, that leg becomes the swing limb. We talked about how gait is going to alternate between periods of double limb support and single limb support, while a single leg will alternate between stance phase and swing phase. We then talked about two different types of foot strike. We could talk about a rear foot strike, which is when the calcaneus will make contact with the ground first, and then we will plantar flex to get the foot flat on the ground. And we contrasted that with a forefoot strike, where the metatarsal heads make contact with the ground first, and then the tail of curl joint will dorsiflex until it becomes level with the ground. We talked about the two elements that will determine gait speed, or how fast you will walk, and that includes the step length and the step rate. We talked about the three functional tasks of gait, weight acceptance, single limb support, and swing limb advancement, and we finished by reviewing the gait cycle.